Hey guys, um, so today I'm gonna give my shot at making the first video of a series I want to call Dreadlocks 101. Um, what I want to do and what my intention with this series is, is just to kind of answer basic questions about dreads or dispel myths and, um, and kind of like explain how things kind of operate. And I'm not an expert, I'm not a cosmetologist, I'm not a loctician, none of that. I've just had dreads for a while, I've made a lot of dreads, made dreads for other people, and so I feel like I can talk about it a little. And I get inspired to make this kind of stuff because I help to run a blog on Tumblr. It's called dreadlockinfo.com. All one word, dreadlockinfo, really easy to find. And we on that blog, because I the there's four other girls, there's three other girls who run it with me, and they were there first, and they brought me on later. But basically, we just strive to put out objective, honest information. So, based on the frequently asked questions, sometimes I might want to make a YouTube video about it. So, here we go. Um, the topic I want to talk about today is why do your roots lock up, and how does that happen? And I'm pretty sure the hypothesis that I have for why and how this happens is true for all hair types. Now with hair types you have type 1, which is straight like me, type 2, which is, you know, kind of wavy, type 3 is curly, think like Blake from Workaholics or... I think it's a, a blonde curly head. I don't know which one. <laughs> and, um, and then you've got your type 3 C hair, which is like beautiful coils, like tighter coils of ringlets of hair. And then you have your type 4 hair, which is zigzaggier, tighter, and, and the absolute curliest hair. So you've got the full range. I think this applies to all hair types locking, and uh, we'll see if that's true. Or I don't know when I'll see if it's true, but I want to try to explain it. So allow me to swing you around to my board. It's just like school, right guys? So you've got your lock right here, your dreadlock. And and you know, it's it's kind of locked up to that point, and then you have roots and your your straight or curly or however textured your hair is, your roots are like this. And they're not quite locked until they get down to about here. Now, my hypothesis for this is that, you know, once I'm getting a different color. Once this hair falls out, it's not going to go out of your hair. It's going to pack itself down into the dread. So it's going to fall and crimp itself down. And then, you know, a new baby hair is going to grow in. And eventually, that baby hair is going to reach into the lock. Then, let's say this hair goes and it falls out. So this hair is going to also form a compacted little area there. And then a new baby hair grows in and it fills into the log. Then this hair falls out. And this hair also crimps up here in the top of the log. And another baby hair will eventually grow in and take its place. And this is my hypothesis on why your dreads are going to lock up and why your roots will grow out, you know, about an inch before they actually start compacting. Um, your hair naturally sheds. You shed about 100 to 300 hairs a day. And those hairs, when your hair is locked, don't go anywhere. So because of that, they're going to compact down into the dread and form knots. And this is actually the same way uh, my boyfriend's hair knots up. He doesn't have dreads, but he has very curly hair. So you've got this beautiful curly hair that I just ran my finger into like this. So imagine this is some curly hair and you know this is the scalp. So one of these, let's say we got a little straggler here. That baby hair falls out of his hair and then it kind of knots itself between these two hairs. And this is where the knot happens. So it's kind of a similar thing. You know, if you're not regularly brushing your hair, what be it because you have curls and you don't want to damage your hair, or be it because your hair is locked, when you shed hairs, I believe that they compact down 
and start forming knots. And when you have dreadlocks, that's kind of a controlled shedding and compacting into knots. And you'll notice this at about four to five months um, after your hair has started locking. You'll notice that you have, um, you know, little hairs with white bulbs on the end kind of sticking out all haywire from your dread. And these are all your shed hairs. So every one of these hairs has created a little more and more compacted knot. And as those hairs fall down and compress, you get locking. So this is why you don't necessarily have to crochet hook your roots. You don't have to actually do anything to make your roots lock, even if you have straight hair. Now, some people do prefer to do crochet hooking, like myself, I prefer it. Um, but really, you don't have to do anything. Your hair, if it's, will grow out a few inches and it will lock itself. Um, some people, uh, for instance, if you're growing out locks and you have type 3 or type 4 hair um, and you do twist maintenance, that might be your form of maintenance to keep your locks separated from one another. And then as they're manually separated into individual locks, this happens. Your hairs shed, they compact down, and that's what happens. And of course, if you've ever brushed out a set of dreadlocks, you know <laughs> that you have lots and lots and lots of hair shed and trapped into this dread. So that's what, in my opinion, accounts for most of the knotting of your dreads. Um, and naturally, there's also, you know, this hair rubs against this hair and this hair, and they're just rubbing together. And they kind of knot up here, then knot up here, and they get tighter and tighter, and then they form knots as well. Um, let me see. And just, if you're going to crochet hook your roots, let's talk about that for a second and see if I have anything relevant to say. So, you've got your roots again, and you want to crochet hook them. What you're doing with the crochet hook is basically you're taking one of these hairs and you're pulling it through to the side and then you're gonna take like like this hair will be pulled into the middle and this hair will be pulled into the middle and you know this hair will get pulled out to the side and you're creating kind of a, a crisscrossing of the hairs when you crochet hook your roots so it's it's an option it's not required for root maintenance and basically the most important things that you can do for your dreads are separating them like I said in the last video you separate them every day make sure the roots are separate unless you want them to grow together which some people do you separate them every day and wash your hair once to twice a week when you wash your hair it encourages that those hairs to fall out and compact it gets rid of the oil on your scalp which increases friction and allows your hairs to go together and form into a lock and get more knotted up and uh, it makes you smell nice when you wash your hair so please wash your hair about once a week and I think people with most hair types can wash their hair about once a week but I know people with the the hair on the far coily and kinky end of the spectrum might not want to wash it as much because it's a little bit more fragile it tends to be so yeah that is my little video for you on why roots lock um i hope i did a good job of explaining it if you have questions feel free to you know leave them in the comment section um you can also go read the faq at dreadlock info i wrote most of it but i think it's on the on the table to be updated and edited because it's a little bit all over the place but it's helpful and it's out there for you guys to learn from so you're welcome to take from it what you will <laughs> and uh yeah i hope this video was helpful thanks guys